Hello everybody, I'm Jeremy and I'm back with a new Deck Tech video. Uh, I know it's been probably a few years and a lot of things have changed. Uh, here I'm actually bringing you a Yu-Gi-Oh! video. I know I haven't done a Yu-Gi-Oh! video ever, but kind of thought I would uh, just kind of start doing them again. I don't really play Naruto anymore, I'm mostly into Magic and Yu-Gi-Oh! Uh, I've got a Pokemon deck, I might put that up. Um, so here's my Yu-Gi-Oh! deck. It's called Warrior Rabbit or Noble Rabbit. Uh, also known as Armored Bunny. Uh, I'm pretty sure a lot of you guys can be familiar with this list if you're looking for, you know, Yu-Gi-Oh! kind of decks. But uh, here's my list. Three Noble Knight Artorgas. Uh, basic 1800 Warrior Light. You need it for most of your Synchro, or most of your Exceeds. Obviously Rabbit Fodder. Same with the Dark Blades. I'm using the Chaos build because I am playing BLS. So that's why I use Dark Blade over like Sparkman and the E-Hero build. So BLS. Just one, obviously. Uh, one Gorge, this one's a Ghost Rare. Gorge is sweet because a lot of times you will, like, um, want to bait out their spells, or if you go into, like, a big rabbit play, and it uses a lot of your resources, and they bottomless you, or they somehow pop your guys, um, you can always either threaten Gores, or, you know, just actually have Gores. He's won me a lot of games. Um, the rest of the monsters, two Thunder King Rihos. I like him because uh, you play so many back row that the deck is almost a control deck. Uh, it's not as good as a control deck, obviously, as Dino Rabbit because you don't have the you don't have the dinosaur um, Laga and Doka, so you don't have those exceeds to go into. So Thunder King's not as good in this deck as it is in other decks. But so you can go like turn one um, Thunder King set four back row or whatever Thunder King set three back row, and then the turn's pretty much locked out, and then that kind of gives you an opening a lot of times because they're going to use a lot of removal on this guy. Because he hoses so many game plans. So, two Thunder King. Two Gwen. Uh I do this because this deck can actually turn one Shockmaster with Rabbit and Gwen in hand. You also get a lot of plays where like you normal summon our Torgus and you just make a Gwen. Uh, you go into a Gwen and you make a guy. Um, they're also 1900 four star warrior light beaters. So, they do everything else you need for the deck. Obviously, double Rabbit. Um, it's Rabbit. If you're unfamiliar with what, what this does, you. Uh, you, when it's in play, you can banish it, and then you get two of your level 4 or lower normal time monsters, in this case, either two Dark Blades or two normal Night of Torguses, because they have to be the same name, and you special summon them, and then you use those to go into Exceeds. Uh, two Rabbit, obviously, they're the uh, tin Rabbits, because I'm poor, and I bought tins. So, obvious. Uh, two Terror Guide, pretty obvious with the deck. You go into the rank 3s, a good deal with this deck. Levier uh, is really good. Levier into rabbit plays. Sorry, that's my phone. Um, where you go, uh, you know, you use rabbit once. You summon tour guide. You fetch you the tour guide or your other targets. You make a levier. You pitch a material. You make a rabbit. You rabbit again. Uh, really strong play. Ends a lot of games really quickly. Uh, one nine assailant. One sangin. These are tour guide targets. They also have utility where sangin can fetch. Uh, tour guide nine assailant. Rabbit. I think that's all the targets in the main deck. After sideboard, it can fetch like Valor. Normally, it'll fetch uh, Rabbit or Tour Guide. And then Night Assailant is a, another target for your second Tour Guide if your first Tour Guide got Sangin. Uh, and it is a Man Eater bug. So that's nice. The spells you have one Monster Reborn, one Heavy, one Dark Hole. Standard for every deck ever while they're legal. One reinforcement of the army. Uh, you can also do plays where this a lot of the times will become a Gwen. So if you have like Rabbit Gwen, that's Shockmaster. Rabbit Rhoda, that's Shockmaster. Um, Artorgus Rhoda, that's a free exceed. Gwen Rhoda, that you get Artorgus, you know, some Artorgus special Gwen, that's a free exceed. So it gives you a lot of options. And sometimes you just need to like fetch a 1900 beater and it thins your deck. Uh, Avarice. I play Avarice because, frankly, you use a lot of your guys, and they go to the bin a lot. So, uh, one Avarice. One Allure. Allure seems kind of weird in a deck that plays so many, uh, so few darks, but I play Expendable Darks. Dark Blade is a card I normally don't want to have in my hand, but a lot of times if I have Dark Blade, and I can draw the Allure, I can just banish it. I've also, I've pitched, like, 90 Silence. I've even pitched two again if I really need to. Um, it's an expendable card. Sometimes I'll just set it and like bait their MST with it. Um, but Allure seems fine in the deck. Uh, two of my bodies of shields. 
Sorry, let me actually take care of this real fast. Are you um, to my body of shields, these should be forbidden lances, but I don't actually have any because I'm just starting to really get into this game uh, seriously. So for now, it's my body as a shield. Kind of does the same thing as lance, but it's not as good as popping their guy. It also can't save them from like bottle or yeah, I can save from bottles. It can't save from like deep prison or compulse, which is why it's way worse, and it costs you 1500 life. But a lot of games aren't grinding you out by like a little bit at a time. They'll either just like 8k you or not. So the 1500 life a lot of times doesn't matter that much. 2 MST, because we do want to deal with the back row in this deck. Because uh, you you know you have to force your damage through somehow. And also, you know, 2 MST is good, especially with like insectors and stuff running around. Uh, double duality. Now a lot of people say, well, you want a turn one rabbit. You know, why would you get duality? Well, because in this deck, a turn one rabbit doesn't always give you the plays that a turn one rabbit in Dino Rabbit would give. Because you don't have any like inherent protection, you know you can go into like my stroke and those guys, but if you waste your turn one rabbit on going into my stroke and then like you set no back rows together, they can just compulse or whatever. So this lets you find cards that um, are a bit more utility. It lets you dig deeper. So that's why I like two duality. Um, if duality was at three, I'd still play two because you you do want a turn that you can special summon in. So two duality. Uh, Solemn brigade. Pretty obvious. Like I said, we're a sort of control deck that just has like an end game of 4 KU. Uh, so you know, we we play the the Solemn Brigade. I'm pretty sure almost every deck does nowadays. Triple Compulse. Um, it answers like every threat ever. <laughs> it gets around Stardust. It's chainable. Like Compulse is just insane. And you can even have plays where like they veil your Rabbit so you can pulse it back to your hand or something. Um, I would rather take like. 1900 or 2000 damage rather than have my rabbit kill and I can just go for rabbit again next turn. Uh, double deep prison. I thought about memory of an adversary over these, but uh, with lances or not without lances having to play my bodies and shields, I don't want to take that much extra damage. If I get lances, these might become memory of an adversary, but for now, deep prison works fine. And of course, you know, deep prison is just a sweet card. Double bottomless. Um, it's bottomless, it's good. Stops them from killing you. I don't know what else to say about this. Uh, sometimes I side this out against wind-ups, because a lot of times they won't go into guys with these hit, or the guy, if they do go into something, it becomes like Zen mains. So I'll actually show you uh, right now, or in a little bit, what I side these out against uh, with wind-ups. So I'll go into the extra deck real fast. Uh, these are Gore's tokens, effectively. Japanese Crush Card Virus and Japanese Relinquished. Just like things I picked up in my time over there. Uh, one Stardust, it's for the side deck Starlight Road. You, you really can't make them in the main deck. I actually like Monster of Born, their four star tuner, and then go into it, but I haven't had it happen. Uh, one Utopia, I still like him. Like, I rare, very, very rarely go into him anymore now that I picked up a Maestro. But uh, it's still like a fine card. Like Utopia is still good. He still runs over things and doesn't get run over, so he's fine. Uh, a Shockmaster. I don't like playing two because a lot of times I'll just never really go into a second one. I don't have a lot of room in here. Shockmaster on turn one will destroy most players. Uh, like turn one Shockmaster, just like your wind up deck, except it takes you less resources, is insane. And then you can pitch the materials and like pot hours from back or whatever, and then use them for BLS. The card's nuts. Um, oops, these are out of order. Double Excalibur, win conditions of the deck. Uh, you take 4k is my favorite thing in the world to say. Like, attack for 4,000. It's amazing. Um, and they're 4,000 till the end of your opponent's turn, so they can't really get cracked back too easy. Um, and that's the main reason you play this deck. It's because you have the big explosive plays where you just, like, bought them for 4k. One Butterfly. Uh, a lot of people told me to cut this. I'll probably never cut this as long as I'm playing this kind of a deck. Butterfly has just been insane in pretty much everything I do. Um, it's actually really good because a lot of people will try to like stall you out with Marshmallow and Spirit Reaper, and you just flip them with Butterfly and smash them. So it's a really good card. One My Stroke. Uh, My Stroke's probably the best four star in existence at the moment, I think, or rank four, sorry, in existence at the moment. Um, flips the big beaters face down, bops them for eighteen, uh, kills pretty much like every boss monster except for. Grapha, and I think Hyperion. Um, and it saves itself from destruction. 
It's got like a 23 bot, like it's sweet. Abyss Dweller! I hate Mermouse. I hate Insectors. I hate, I don't know, stuff that I don't play. So you do Abyss Dweller with them. Um, you can go into it off of one rabbit or any Gwen play. Abyss Dweller. It's sweet. It's 1800, which is, or it's 1700, which is kind of small, but, and we can't really give it the attack boost because we don't have any waters, but whatever. The card's still sweet. One Blade Armor Ninja. Um, I kind of want to get a second one of these. If you're not familiar with this effect, he's a 2200 4 star, requires two warriors. We are fine with that. Uh, you pitch a material, you target a ninja. He's a ninja. Uh, and it can attack twice. So it like beats for 44. Uh, or it can like hit two other guys or hit their guy and hit them. So it's like your mini BLS. Um, it's fine. It's sweet. I want a second one. It's exp kind of expensive. Uh, one Leviathan Dragon. This is the three, three ranks now. Leviathan Dragon just becomes a big beater off a tour guide. No real explaining there. Um, number 30 Golem becomes a bigger beater when you just need to get over their guy or kill them. Um, that's about it. Also, I kind of go into this probably more than I should against decks that I know are playing Creature Swamp. Because like I'll go into this and be like, okay, if you want to swamp it, it's going to be defunct in like another turn, and then you're, you're going to die if you Creature Swap. So it turns off some Creature Swaps, which Creature Swaps historically have been good against like the one good creature deck. Because, you know, they just kill them. That's also why I play Triple Compulse, because it kind of beats Creature Swap. Uh, one Zen Mains, because it's Zen Mains. <laughs> uh, if you're looking up this because you want to look at deck lists, you know what this card does. If you're looking at it because you're a friend or whatever, I'll tell you what this card does. Uh, it's three, level threes, so you just make the tour guide thing I was talking about earlier. You go into Zen Mains, put him in defense mode. If he were to be destroyed, period, by anything, card effect, monster, whatever, uh, you can pitch one of the materials, and then he's not destroyed. And during that end step, you can destroy, or you have to destroy a card in play. You can do this twice with Zen Mains. He's insane. He's probably the best rank 3, debatably. He's the best non-archetype uh, rank 3, I can guarantee that. There's Zen Mains. Um, Temp Tempo. Pretty much it's actually like anti-Zen Mains. Uh, you can pitch material, and then you take a material off an opponent's monster, and it gets like 300? Oh no, 500. So it becomes like a 22 beater, which is actually enough to run over Zen mains, which is kind of convenient. So if they have Zen mains at one material, you remove the material and you kill their Zen mains. Uh, he's a fine card. He's also a fiend, so he combos with uh, Dark World stuff, I guess. Like he gets pumped off their gates to 22 and then he pumps to 25, which is kind of sweet. Two Levier. Um. You play Levier because it makes sweet, sweet love to Rescue Rabbit. Also, it makes sweet, sweet love to their Rescue Rabbit, which is hilarious. And the Rabbit Mirror, like, you Levier their Rabbit. It's good stuff. So, yeah, that's Levier. He's also 18 for 3, and he's got 16 defense. Like, he's a really good monster. Side deck. Double Veiler. Because I'm not playing in the main deck. Um, they're still a light. Like, they do a bunch of stuff. A lot of times, the decks that I'll side Valor in, I'll side out, like, either Compulse or Bottomless. Sometimes I'll side out, I'll even side out, like, Gwaine's, because Gwaine can be kind of a slower card. And the, the decks that you need Valor for, you need Valor, like, the, the game is not going to be long, one way or another. Either you Valor them and you stop their play and then you kill them, or, like, you don't Valor them and they one-shot you a lot. Same idea with Max C. Max C against Windups, against the, uh... Synchron deck, like Quasar, uh, same with Valor, um, a lot of stuff like that. Um, Maxi is just way too good. Six Sams, I destroyed a Six Sam player by like, I max seed him when he went into Xi'an. So I drew two and I drew like Compulse Rabbit or something dumb. Double Noble and a Cross Out, mostly against Machinas, but it's also just good removal. Like it hits, um, Based on Reapers, it hits the stupid Mermel thing. It hits anything they play face down. Like, so many things. Raikou is the other really popular one people play and actually gets all their Raikos. And I don't obviously play Raikos. So, yeah. The card is nuts. And it combos kind of suit with my stroke. So you can my stroke their guy face down and they're just Nobleman it. Um, so that card's really good. Double Soul Taker. Mostly because it beats um, Dragons. Because they don't get the trigger off Light Pulsar. Um, because it misses the timing, but dragons aren't really that popular. It also beats Hero, because they have a Shining, they don't get it. It's also unconditional, just like, pop your guy. 
So if they're playing something where maybe they'll make like a big guy I can't get over or whatever, they're trying to marshmallow install me and I had, had some of my other cards, I can just soul taker it. But then getting a thousand is that big of a deal because again, this deck will not grind you out, it just kills you. These are the cards I switch with Bottomless. They're Needle Ceilings. Um, needle Ceiling is kind of an ancient card. I used to play it when this, like, when the game was, you know, not as it is now. Back when Jinzo and all that crap was really good. Well, not obviously Jinzo. But uh, <laughs> back when those kind of decks were good. Pretty much, I played this against the Warrior Toolbox decks that couldn't play Jinzo. They just played, like, Goblin, Tack Force, and Marauding Captain. Uh, what was the other name of that card? The 16 that got plus 4 if you didn't have cards in your hand or whatever. Um, yeah, so what Neil Sailing says is that uh, you can actually only activate this card when there are four or more face-up monsters in the field to struggle face-up monsters. So, you know, say you go, like, uh, I set a card, I set this, I say go. They're doing the rabbit plays, and they get, like, three guys in play, which they'll do, you know, the first loop. You just Neil Sailing them, and it kills all their stuff. Hell, even if you put a guy face-up, you can kill your own guy. It doesn't matter. You're going to, like, minus two or minus three them every time with needle Sailing. A uh, double macro, because this deck can just very easily become like Macro Warrior Rabbit, where you just side out your BLS and you side out. What's the other card I side out? I side out BLS and I side out something else, and I side in Macro Cosmos. Because it crushes Dark World, it crushes Mermel, it crushes Dragons, obviously. It crushes a lot, a lot of decks right now. Macro is super good. Um, one Starlight Road, mostly actually against Light Sworn along with Macro Cosmos, because it beats their Judgment Dragon. Uh, also against any deck that any other deck that's playing a lot of mass removal. I had it in the main deck for a while, but it always got MST, so I decided to put it in the side deck. Double Mind Crush. Why? Because everyone's playing archetypes now. So Mind Crush will just destroy a player if you know his deck. Also, if they tutor for anything, you can pretty much Mind Crush them, because a lot of cards, like, say they tutor for um, Abyss Megalo. To pay his cost, you have to reveal it, and you can chain the reveal and mind crush them. Same with Wind Up Shark. So you can actually just beat Wind Ups that way. Um, so that's the side deck, and that's my Warrior Rabbit uh, Chaos deck. So yeah, that's it. Um, like, favorite, subscribe if you like this video. Uh, I'll be doing more deck videos here for different games. Tell me which, guy, which uh, decks you guys liked, which decks you guys didn't like. Uh, tell me if you have any ideas on how to improve my deck. Again, especially with Yu-Gi-Oh! I am not, like, the best player right now. I'm not anywhere near it. I'm actually just trying to get back into the game and trying to adapt with uh, what the game's doing and where they're going with it. So, that's it. That's my deck. Uh, thanks for watching, and I will be back later with more deck videos. Have a good night.